Good morning friends. Today I am going to talk about one important function of the brain called attention. Uh, when we casually use the word attention, the ability to focus or concentrate comes to mind. That is true, but there is another side to attention, which is the ability to suppress unwanted things. In neurology, we use the term stimulus to anything that can grab your interest. Problem is we have hundreds of stimuli around us, but we have only one mind. That is why we need this important function called attention. Lower animals also have attention, but there is an important difference. I will explain this to you with uh, example. I have a dog. He likes to get out whenever possible, whenever I open the gate. So, what he does, uh, when I open the gate, he rushes out. He keeps uh, smelling everything around and uh, finally, he gets interested in something. It may be something lying on the road, it may be a stray cat, maybe another dog or something like that. Um, when he rushes out of the gate, he has no plan, but on the way, he decides uh, what is important and what is not. This is called bottom up attention. This, uh, there is nothing basically wrong with this behavior. Even our children do it all the time. It is what we call the kid in the candy store kind of situation. But when adult humans set about a task, we usually have a plan in mind. For example, if I go out to buy something, I already know what I want to buy and I keep looking for that particular thing. This is called top down attention. So, if you can summarize, uh, bottom up attention means you are under the control of your surroundings, your environment. And top down attention means you are in control. You know what you want and you uh, decide what you want as you navigate your surroundings. You know, there is an area in our brain called frontal lobe, uh, which is very advanced in human beings compared to lower animals. Uh, you know, the main function of the frontal lobe, the function of the frontal lobe is to inhibit or suppress unwanted stimuli, to inhibit the urge to do unnecessary things inhibit the urge to do socially inappropriate things. If you think That's about children, children start developing and fine tuning their attention at a very early age. For example, uh, you think of an infant, the infant has to learn how to talk. The only way to learn how to talk is to observe uh, her mother's speech or any adult human speech. So, the infant has to focus on the mother's speech and suppress everything else. Think of a child who is in school, uh, he has to listen to the teacher. In order to listen to the teacher, he has to suppress the urge to play with his uh, best friend who is sitting near him. And uh, for example, take a student who is preparing for exams. The student has to suppress the desire for recreational activities, uh, for example, like cricket on an everyday basis in order to focus on his exam preparation. So, you see this ability to focus on something and the ability to suppress unwanted distractions, these go hand in hand. This ability to suppress unwanted distractions is key to our growth and development. Therefore, attention is a very important aspect of our cognition. But unfortunately, today we live in a world full of distractions, right from the time of waking up we are distracted by numerous stimuli. We live in a connected world. So, what that means, anyone can call you at any time of the day and disturb you, call you, whatsapp you or in message you or whatever. Even if we are free for like 10 minutes, we tend to pick up our phone and start scrolling through a short videos, an endless stream of short videos and then you are interrupted by an advertisement that is trying to sell you something. And then you blame it on the social media algorithms. You see what is happening here? You are regressing from top down attention to bottom up attention. And that is not even the real problem. The real problem is you do not know when to stop. There is always one more interesting clip, one more interesting piece of information, one more joke, one more laugh and it goes on like that. It always keeps you wanting for more. Uh, people never seem to be able to stop scrolling. No one ever says, uh, now I can, now I have seen all the jokes. 
I can stop now. No, no one ever says that. This damages not only your productivity, but also your relationships and all areas of your life. It ultimately damages your happiness and peace of mind. Coming back to the subject of children, we have seen that infants who have uh, unsupervised screen time, they have a tough time learning to talk. That's because learning to talk itself is incumbent on closely observing adult speech. After a while, the parents will come to a doctor, they will say, doctor, my child is not talking. And the doctor will prescribe uh, speech therapy. Now, uh, do you think any amount of speech therapy can be a substitute for a parent's presence and attention? Just think, if the parents are also distracted and the child is also distracted, how is the child going to learn to talk? Some children with attention problems behave uh, in a different manner. They become hyperactive or overactive, which means they start attending to all the stimuli around them. So, they are uh, labeled as hyperactive children and diagnosed as ADHD. Uh, ADHD trans, I am sure many of you would have heard of the term ADHD. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. These disorders do have a biological basis, but the modern culture of di digital distractions is undeniably one of the main forces driving these problems. So, what is the solution? Looks like there is no escape, but what to do? For starters, we can try to reduce the children's exposure to smartphones. I will tell you there is absolutely no reason to be proud of the fact that your baby can handle a smartphone. Okay, so don't feel proud about it. And um, don't think your children are becoming more intelligent by watching a lot of videos. These videos, especially the short videos and reels, they are just killing your child's concentration power. So, first we have to modify our behavior because children tend to imitate adults. If at all you have to give your smartphone child to your child, try to structure your child's exposure to the smartphone in some way. It may be with online educational content. It may be with uh, video games that are appropriate for their age or something like that. But remember to limit the exposure to digital world and increase the exposure to the real world. I hope you found this useful. We shall be discussing more functions of the brain and their social implications in subsequent videos. So, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.